Welcome to Basketball U. If you're new to Basketball U, make sure you slam dunk that subscribe button. And just to make sure you don't miss a thing, make sure you tap that notification bell right after you hit that subscribe button. Welcome back, Basketball U. This is the series, Role Players. Before we jump into today's episode, we want to bring light to the stigma of not playing high-level college basketball. So far, we have covered two players who had a major impact on the world of basketball they played in. The consistency of their hard work and ability to be detailed with their role of the positions they were in and taking advantage of the opportunity presented them with the success they had in their careers. Before the Stephen Currys, the Dame Lillards of the college basketball world, there was mid-major success early in the league. As I introduce you to this role player, first, hit that like button and be sure to leave a comment. So, today we are going to discuss a unique role player that comes from a very small mid-major. Most role players fall under the radar when playing alongside a superstar, but this particular four-time All-Star and Olympic gold medalist played his role so well, he even had his own signature shoe with the Jordan brand, which now and at the time was a very exclusive brand for players that were a part of the brand. So basketball, you family, meet Vin Baker. Don't let people stop you. Make your mind up and go on through. Don't you give up this race. Baker played for Old Saybrook High School in Old Saybrook, Connecticut. He first started on Old Saybrook's varsity in his junior year. Baker was passed over by the bigger Division I schools and signed a scholarship offer from the Hartford Hawks. During Baker's freshman season in 1989, he averaged on five points and three rebounds per game, which earned him a place in the North Atlantic Conference All-Rookie Team. Doesn't sound like much to get that honor or to even think about the NBA. Once he became a starter for his sophomore season, Baker averaged 20 points per game and 10 rebounds per game in the first team All-NAC team. As a junior, Baker averaged 27.6 points per game, that's second in the country, 10 rebounds per game, and 3.7 blocks per game, fifth in the country. Though the team finished with a 6 wins, 21 loss record. Entering his final season, Baker was called America's Best Kept Secret by Sports Illustrated and the conference's most dominant player. Baker went on to average 28.3 points per game, fourth in the country, and finished with 792 points in only 28 games. A conference record that still remains in the NAC, which is now named America East Conference. He finished with 2,238 points a school record that still stands. However, Baker was not able to translate his immense scoring abilities into team success, as none of his teams ever made the NCAA tournament. And the best his Hartford team ever finished in the season was .500, 14 wins, 14 losses. Ben Baker's jersey, number 42, hangs on the east wall of Chase Arena 
in the Reich family pavilion. After his successful career in college, the NBA took notice of Ben Baker's talents and he was no longer the best kept secret. Baker was drafted eighth by the Milwaukee Bucks in the 1993 NBA draft. Even though Baker was a lottery pick, he became well-traveled through the NBA. The first stop was Milwaukee, where he played four seasons and averaged 18 points, picking up right where he left off in Hartford. Ben Baker was then traded to the Seattle Supersonics for some high-profile players at that time. His numbers were up and down in Seattle, but he made a good enough impression to make the USA Olympic team and contribute eight points a game and a gold medal for the United States. Spending two more years in Seattle also collaborated with the shoe brand Jordan under their Team Jordan brand campaign. He had his own signature shoe called Vindicate. The shoe did great in sales and helped grow the brand even more. Not a bad career so far, right? After Seattle traded him to his next stop, Boston, Ben Baker wasn't the same person as he was earlier in his career. With some issues off the court that affected his game on the court, it led Ben Baker to a few different destinations and less and less production. After Boston, he was released, but then later signed with the New York Knicks. Even though the team reached the playoffs, his production just didn't meet the requirements the Knicks wanted, only averaging six points per game and four rebounds per game. Then Baker was traded to the Rockets only to get released and play in a limited role in Los Angeles with the Clippers, and then ended his career in Minnesota with just being a part of a few games. We all eventually have that moment of truth when it physically leaves us. Says Baker. The fans stop cheering. The game goes away. Then we have a moment of reality about what comes next. It eventually goes away for every player. For me, that moment came abruptly. It was what's next before I was ready to be finished. With a newfound humility, Baker was able to put his pride aside and make a phone call that would change the direction of his life once again. His former boss, Howard Schultz, who had owned the Sonics when Baker played in Seattle, not only took his call, but he helped Baker come up with a plan. Part of that plan was for Baker to serve coffee at another business Schultz managed, Starbucks. From school to seminary to Starbucks, I was slowly reinventing who I was, Baker explains. My identity from college and more than a decade after was all about the game of basketball. I was forced into a place where I had to think about my life as opposed to just basketball because it was taken away from me. At some point, we all will have that. Life will deal us something big or small, where it's not just about basketball, and the priorities in our lives will test us. The priority for me became life, and focusing on things that I need to improve on as a human being. Although his career may not seem like he did much, coming from a mid-major university, players tend to have a little chip on their shoulder to prove they belong. He impacted the game and left a stamp on it. He has made the All-Star team four times in a few second and third All-NBA teams. And don't let me forget, he has a nice shiny gold medal. Thanks for tuning in. This is Basketball U. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And also, follow all of our social medias right there in the description to keep yourself up to date as this channel will have a lot of basketball, a lot of players, and a lot of training and more information on how to play the game of basketball. Remember, someone's always working.
Are you? 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 You?